If you've ever tried to model directly from a reference image, you may know that the right camera settings can be extremely frustrating and time consuming to get. Luckily, there's FSpy. FSpy is a camera matching software, which essentially means it's designed to extract certain camera settings from an image. Not only that, but there's an FSpy Blender plugin, which makes it super easy to import the settings you extract from FSpy. A lot of what I'll teach in this video comes directly from the FSpy website. The website is really detailed, yet easy to follow, so I won't be explaining everything there is to know about the software, but instead give you an example of how you can use it. To install FSpy, you're going to go to fspy.io, and if you scroll down just a bit, you'll see this big green button here that says download, click on that, and you'll be brought to GitHub. Now here you're going to choose the package that's right for your operating system, I'm on Windows, so I'll download this one. And once that package finishes downloading, you're going to want to create a folder somewhere. I made one on my desktop called fspy, and you're going to want to extract all the contents of that package to that folder that you made. Once you've done that, you'll see the fspy executable right here. If you want, you can right click, go send to, and desktop to create a desktop shortcut. Next, we're going to install the Blender plugin. So go back to fspy.io and scroll down a bit more to where you see importing to Blender. And then this link right here that says official fspy importer add-on. Click on that, and you'll be brought to GitHub again. You'll go over here to clone or download, and then click download zip. Now this file you're not gonna extract. You're just gonna put it somewhere on your hard drive, and we're gonna install it to Blender directly from the zip file later on. So before we hop in, let me just give a brief explanation of FSpy. Essentially, FSpy allows you to define vanishing points within an image by matching line segments in the image to axes. FSpy uses these vanishing points to make estimations about the camera's parameters. It's important to keep in mind that some images will not work with FSpy. Directly from their website, this includes photos taken with lenses with severe distortion, such as fisheye lenses, images with perspective that has been tampered with, 3D images rendered with an orthographic camera, and stitched panorama images. So steer clear of images that fit this description, and you should be good to go. So upon running FSpy, you'll be prompted to either drop an image here or load an example project. I'll be using this image of a bathroom. Alright, so on the left hand side we have some settings. In the middle we have our image and a bunch of control points that we'll talk about in a minute. And on the right hand side we have all the features of the camera that FSpy is trying to extract. So without talking too much, I'm just going to start doing things and explaining as I go along. So right up here, this number of vanishing points, let's change this to 1. And you'll see we have two red lines and one green line. Now if we go to these vanishing point axes, if I change this X to Y, you'll see we have three green lines. And now I change this Y to Z. We have two green lines and one blue line. And as you probably guessed, the green lines represent the y-axis, whereas this blue line represents the z-axis. Now the goal here is to line these up with lines in the image that correspond to that axis. Now I'll usually treat the y as going in and out of the camera. So what I'll do is I'll take this control point, bring it right here, and you can hold shift to zoom in like so. All right, and then I'm going to take this line over here and match it up with the base of the shower doors like so. And you can see that this thin line coming off meets, and that is the vanishing point on the y-axis. Now, this blue line here will control the rotation around the other axis. So because it's the y, you'll see as I rotate this, this gizmo rotates around the y-axis. So I'm going to line this up with this edge of the door here. And if you grab this gizmo and move it around, you can see that this works out pretty well. Now, when dealing with one vanishing point, there's a couple of things to note. You actually have to give FSpy the camera sensor width and the focal length, which a lot of the times may not be possible because you may not know those parameters you can try and play around here and see what works but that just involves a lot more guesstimation than what we want and a lot of the time i will use two vanishing points however i want to point out that i did this previously to recording this and i ended up going with one vanishing point because in this particular case it wound up working well for me i also want to point out that for some reason i had the y set to x in the example that i'm going to show you inside of blender in a little bit so when we get into Blender, you're going to see the X is moving away from the camera and the Y is perpendicular. It's really not that big of a deal, but I just want to point that out. Anyways, though, I want to talk about more of these settings and show you an example of using more vanishing points before we move on. So if we switch this to two vanishing points, you'll see that we now have two Z axes. 
So I'll bring this one to match this line right here. And I want to show you something to be careful of. All right, so you can see now that that gizmo disappeared and on the right hand side it says invalid vanishing point configuration and essentially that's because these are two parallel to one another or because they're diverging rather than converging and there's no vanishing point they never meet at any point and as i've said previously fspy relies on those vanishing points so a good way to make sure this doesn't happen is to pick lines that are on the extreme of the image so in this case this line here is pretty far to the right so we'll go further to the left of the image say to the edge of this mirror and we'll put this line right here and you can see now that it's able to figure out that vanishing point and our gizmo comes back and it looks pretty good overall the goal here is to have your parallel lines have an angle between them so that they eventually converge at a point and as you can see on the right hand side here, we're getting the image width and height. We're getting the field of view, the camera position, and the camera orientation. Now principal point I'll briefly talk about, but it's not something we have to worry about too much for this particular image. So directly from FSpy's website, if you imagine a ray going into the camera, the point in the image that that ray comes from, or I'm sorry, if you imagine a ray going in directly to the center of the camera sensor, the point on the image that that ray comes from that is the image or that is the principal point and it normally coincides with the image midpoint sometimes it may not and i have yet to encounter a case where it doesn't and if it doesn't you have the option of picking manual principal point where you can drag and drop the, the principal point manually and you can also solve from a third vanishing point so real quick let me change that x-axis back to y and then you'll see this changes to x so in this case we would do something like this And in this image in particular, it seems to be getting it completely wrong. Like I said, I have yet to come to a case where I had to rely on this to find the image uh, principal point. So in this particular case, I'm just going to go back to one. But I wanted to point that out just so that uh, you had an understanding of what that meant. Now, 3D Guide here, you can bring in different objects to have a look to see how well they sit in your scene. This line matches up pretty good on the base of the shower doors here. This line matches up pretty well with the line on the trim here. You can also bring in a YZ grid, an XZ grid, and an XY grid. And that's really as deep as I'm going to go into FSPY for the sake of this video. So when you're happy with the results that you have and everything looks to line up good, what you want to do is you want to go to File save as and save it somewhere with the default dot fspy extension now we're going to hop into blender all right so we're inside of blender now and i'm just going to select everything and delete it and we're going to install that fspy importer add-on so what you're going to do is you're going to go to edit preferences and on the add-ons tab you're going to want to go up here to install and you're going to want to locate that zip file that we saved earlier once you find that zip file, you're going to click on it and you're going to click install add on from file. Once you do, if you go back to the add ons window and you type in fspy, you'll see it here import export import fspy project. Just check that X out of this and you should be good to go. Now, if you go to file import, you'll see this fspy extension right here and you can click on it and navigate to the file that you saved out of fspy. And you'll see that it loads up the background image and it sets your camera's position, rotation, and field of view or focal length. Now at this point, you can snap into camera mode and you can start trying to line shapes up with the room as a whole. So in my case, what I would do is I would add a plane, grab it, pull it down on the Z, match up this edge line right here to where it, the floor meets the wall. Grab it on the Y, pull it this way and it's not perfect 
but again it usually doesn't have to be it usually just has to be good enough to get you started and that's kind of the point of this it's not a lot that you're modeling directly from a reference image unless you're practicing or if you're doing something called camera projection which we're not really going to talk much about in this video so if it's not perfect don't be discouraged just get something that looks good and use your own creative license to finish out the scene all right so that floor looks like it lines up pretty good but to make sure what we're going to do is go into face mode here and we're going to extrude and bring this up on the z now i'm going to pull this back so that the camera's inside this box and i'm going to go into wireframe mode all right and you can see that the ceiling's not high enough so let's bring that up and also this wall over here is too far over here the corner is not matching up so let's bring this over on the y So that looks like it's lining up pretty good, and we have the overall shape of our room now, which is awesome and saved me a lot of time in comparison to if I were trying to model this just freehand. So another thing I want to talk about real quick before I end the tutorial is an illusion that you can fall into. So let's try and make the base right here where the uh, shower door meets. So what we'll do is we'll add a cube. Oops, I'm still in edit mode. Let's go into object mode. We'll add a cube. Size it down a bit. Bring it down on the Z, bring it over on the Y, size it down, bring it down, and just try to line up these edges here. Do something like that. Now that looks pretty good. However, if I go into solid mode, you'll realize it's not even in the room. And that's just one of those illusions of perspective in 3D that you can fall into so what I suggest doing in situations like this is first putting it against walls that you know it's gonna be against so in this case we know for sure that this is gonna be touching both the floor and the back wall so let's position it like that I'll actually go into solid mode for this just like that now we can snap into camera view and we know that we can't move it on the X or on the Z because doing so will either pull it off this back wall or bring it into the air. So while we're trying to do this, we know, okay, we have to move this on the Y in this case and we can size it down, but you just got to be sure that it doesn't lift off the floor or come off that back wall, which I think it is right now. So just go in, grab it on the X and now that looks pretty good no weird illusions it's touching the floor and that back wall and this is a great start to modeling this bathroom and from here it's really just a matter of going in and lining up with the rest of the objects in the scene now obviously you're not gonna model every single thing from this camera view unless you really really want to try to but like for example I wouldn't sit here trying to model this uh, knob for the shower to be exact or anything like that one thing I would do though is model this little shelf that they have here in the shower. So I would go, I would select the room, go into edit mode. And it doesn't want to let me add a loop cut in the right direction. So I'll just do that. Hit G twice. Drag it right there. Add another one. Drag it right there. One above. One below. And now I can select this face, extrude it, and we now have that nice little window right there. Maybe extrude it a little bit more. And that's really all there is to this tutorial. From here on out, I'm, I'm sure you can see what you, you have to do to continue modeling this. You just want to try lining things up. Again, with the with the uh, the counter here you're gonna want to put it against the walls that you know it's against we know it's against this back wall and this wall here so we can do something like this and size it on the Y bring it back on the Y because it's probably not against the wall now pull it up like that grab this face grab it on the X So here's the image that I wound up with. It's certainly not perfect, but I'm definitely happy with it. It's a lot closer to the reference image than it would have been if I had tried to do it freehand. 
So yeah, that's all there is to this tutorial, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please slap a like on it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, put them in the comments down below. As I mentioned earlier, this is also a useful technique for something called projection mapping. If that's something you'd like me to talk about in a future video, let me know in the comments. And again, thank you for watching. I wish you all the best results.